Hello, God bless you. Today, we are going to study the Bible and share the grace of God under the subject, Mother, the Source of the Water of Life. Today, the words of God that we are going to study have two very important points we need to look at. The first important point is that water is the source of life for us. And the second important point is that the water of life, which is the source of life, is given to us through our Heavenly Mother, Jerusalem. Let us have time to find the words of God about it and engrave them on our hearts. Let us take a look at the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 17. It reads, the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come, and whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. The most important point in Revelation chapter 22 is that the Spirit and the Bride give us the water of life. God summarizes the important truth, which is very simple. When God created all things, He made it so every living creature could not live without water. Water is absolutely needed and indispensable to maintain life. Seventy percent of the human body consists of water, and if we lose just fifteen percent of the water in our body, we lose our life. In other words, we die. This explains well how important water is for our life. Water is the most important factor to preserve our life. Then, what about our spiritual life? It is the same. Those who do not have the water of life for spiritual life cannot live. This is why God came to this earth as the Spirit and the Bride, and earnestly say to all human beings in this world, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to us and receive the water of life. They are earnestly saying this to everyone. Then we must know who the Spirit and the Bride are, who give us the water of life, and go and find the Spirit and the Bride, who give us the water of life. This is the wisdom we must have in this age. The Trinity means God the Father. God the Son and God the Holy Spirit are one God. We have a full understanding that the Spirit is God the Father. Then who is the bride? Let's go to Revelation chapter 21, verse 9 together. It reads, One of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues, came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the Spirit to a mountain great and high, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Whose wife is the bride here? It is said that she is the wife of the Lamb. What did the angel show John when he said that he would show him the bride, the wife of the Lamb? The angel showed him the holy city, Jerusalem. So, if we know who the wife of the Lamb, the bride, is, then it's possible for us to ask the bride for the water of life. Since the Bible clearly testifies that God will fill our thirsty souls with the water of life through the Spirit and the Bride. We must find out who the Bride, the wife of the Lamb, is. The Bible describes that the wife of the Lamb, the Bride, is the holy city, Jerusalem. Then, whom does Jerusalem represent? Let us go to Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. It reads, but the Jerusalem that is above is free. And she is who? Our mother. Since the Holy Spirit is our Father, then it's a given that the bride of our Father is who to us. This is why Galatians chapter 4 describes our mother as Jerusalem. The Bible informs us of the existence of our mother, who is described as Jerusalem. And it also tells us that we should go to the Spirit and the Bride to receive the water of life in the last days. What does Revelation chapter 22 verse 17 say? The Spirit and the Bride say what? 
They say, come. As the Spirit and the Bride call us, we must go to them who tell us to come. And only then can we receive the water of life. Then let's go to Zechariah chapter 14, verse 7 and see how the prophets have prophesied about Jerusalem. It will be a unique day, without daytime or nighttime, a day known to the Lord. When evening comes, there will be light. On that day, living water. Living water means the water of life. Where does this water of life flow out from? will flow out from Jerusalem, half to the Eastern Sea and half to the Western Sea, in summer and in winter. Prophet Zechariah said that the water of life would flow from Jerusalem. What does Revelation chapter 21 testify about Jerusalem? It testifies that Jerusalem is the wife of the Lamb, the bride, that is our mother according to Galatians chapter 4. In the Bible, the words, on that day, refers to the last days. The last age, the age of the Holy Spirit we live in. The Bible says that the living water will flow out from Jerusalem, half to the Eastern Sea and half to the Western Sea. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 17, it is said, If anyone is thirsty, come to me to receive the water of life. So, we went to find the source of the spring of the water of life, and where is that place? Where does the Bible say that the water of life flows out from? Jerusalem is the source of the water of life, and the source that the water of life flows out from is none other than our Mother. The Bible teaches us that all the spiritual work of God is accomplished through our Mother. The prophet Amos prophesied that all human beings in the world would feel thirsty because they could not get access to water the spiritual water. It is written that men would stagger, searching for the water of life, but that they would not find it. Fortunately, however, we have received the water of life and have come into Zion, following the call of the Spirit and the Bride, come in Zion from the spring of salvation, which is allowed by our Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother. We drink the living water, that is, the words of the truth of life. In Zechariah chapter 14, God says that the water of life will flow out from Jerusalem, half to the Eastern Sea and half to the Western Sea, through which God teaches us again and helps us realize that the source of the water of life is none other than our Heavenly Mother, Jerusalem. There is a prophecy that this water of life, which springs forth from Jerusalem, will flow into every place of the world. Now let us find out one more prophecy from the Bible that the water of life will flow into the whole world and heal the nations. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 1. The man brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the temple faced east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. Which temple is this where the water is coming out from? It is the Jerusalem temple. The water of life was coming down from under the south side of the Jerusalem temple, south of the altar. Verse 2. He then brought me out through the north gate and led me around the outside to the outer gate facing east. And the water was flowing from the south side, as the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand. He measured off a thousand cubits and then led me through water that was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand cubits and led me through water that was knee deep. He measured off another thousand and led me through water that was up to the waist. He measured off another thousand, but now it was a river that I could not cross. Because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in, a river that no one could cross. He asked me, Son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. As the water of life forms a river, what is this river? It is the river of the water of life. On each side of the river of the water of life stand a great number of trees. In the book of Revelation, 
What kind of tree are these trees? They are the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. The book of Revelation describes about the river of the water of life, with the tree of life on each side. Here is the same scene in Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 7. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, This water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah, where it enters the sea. When it empties into the sea, the water there becomes how? Fresh. The water there becomes fresh. Verse 9. Swarms of living creatures will... What? Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will what? Everything will live. We know that the sea means human society, as we have studied the prophecy of Revelation chapter 17. The river of the water of life is to flow in human society. It is to flow towards Asia, Africa, Oceania, Europe, South America, North America, Northern China, Southern China, Northern India, Southern India, Russia and Brazil. What will happen when this water of life flows to every place of the world? The Bible says that everything will live where the water flows. Just as prophesied, even though we are not good at foreign languages and we did not know well about the customs of other countries, we depended on father and mother's words and delivered the water of life to the whole world very diligently. As a result, Asia, Africa, Europe, Oceania, South America, North America, Northern China, Southern China, Northern India, Southern India, Russia and Brazil all overflow with the water of life from God, and many souls are coming into the truth. They use different languages, have different customs, and different skin color, and look different. What made all these different kinds of people come to Zion? That is because the water of life is flowing out to all places through the world. As the water of life spread to the sea, to human society, now the children of Zion who are scattered throughout the world are coming to the truth. So no prophecy will fail to be fulfilled. Let us look at the words of verse 9 again. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Fishermen will stand along the shore. From En Gedi to En Inglium, there will be places for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the great sea. But the swamps and marshes will not become fresh, they will be left for salt. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear, because the water from where? from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food, and their leaves for what? For healing. Since their leaves serve for healing, wherever the water flows, what happens to all living beings? They can't help but live. Now, according to such prophecy, God already made it known to us that Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother would appear in this age as the Spirit and the Bride, and that we should go to the Spirit and the Bride to receive the water of life. Only by drinking the water of life, God's children can restore their lost memories about heaven. They are now recovering their memory about heaven little by little through the water of life. So what did God say? My sheep listen to what? My sheep listen to my voice. Through His words, God lets us restore our memories about heaven one after another and allows us to be qualified to enter the eternal kingdom of heaven. One of the qualifications is to find the bride and go to her to receive the water of life. This is one condition of our salvation. 
Among the things that Apostle John saw in his visions, there is a scene about the water of life that the Spirit and the Bride grant to us. Let us look at Revelation chapter 22, verse 1. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. According to Zechariah chapter 14, verse 8, where does the living water flow out from? It is written that it flows out from Jerusalem. However, here it is written, the water of life flows from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Then, we should absolutely know the relationship between these two and then continue. What does the throne here refer to? What does it indicate? Let us look at Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 17. It reads, At that time they will call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all nations will gather in Jerusalem to honor the name of the Lord. No longer will they follow the stubbornness of their evil hearts. In those days the house of Judah will join the house of Israel, and together they will come from a northern land to the land I gave your forefathers as an inheritance. Then, who does the throne refer to? Jerusalem. Who does Jerusalem refer to? She is our mother. Then ultimately the two verses are the same. The words of Zechariah chapter 14 verse 8, Living water will flow out from Jerusalem, and the words of Revelation chapter 22, the water of life flows from the throne of the Lamb. Are these two verses different or same? They are the same contents. The only thing that was different was the words or the figurative expressions to explain about Jerusalem. After finding out, there is no mistaking that all these terms indicate Jerusalem Mother. When we become weary in our life, whom should we seek to receive strength, hope, and faith? We should seek Jerusalem and drink the spiritual water of life from her to our heart's content and to obtain new strength and walk more vigorously towards our glorious future. Let us look at Revelation chapter 22, verse 1 again. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. In Ezekiel chapter 47, it is written, Their leaves serve for healing. Here in Revelation chapter 22, it is written, The leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Right. The leaves serve for the healing of the nations. Since it is written that the leaves serve for the healing of the nations, doesn't it mean that through the water of life, God will revive the nations and save them all? Where does the source of all this power come from? It is said that it comes from Jerusalem. For this reason, the glory of Jerusalem is to spread to Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And all nations should have a mind that yearns for Jerusalem. So in the Old Testament times, where did the Israelites always face when they prayed? Whether they were taken captive to another country or they were on a long journey, they all faced Jerusalem. When they prayed or when they missed their home country, they always faced Jerusalem with all their heart in the Old Testament times. Such history is symbolic. It shows us that we should also have a yearning mind for the Holy New Jerusalem Heavenly Mother and that we should always be the children who are willing to accompany our Mother. Today, let us engrave these contents on our hearts once again. Let us look at verse 3. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. 
the angel said to me, these words are what? Trustworthy. What if a person who could predict future events prophesied, you are destined to become president? You will have great expectations in your life, thinking, although I go through hardships now, if I endure a little more, I will become president of this country. You feel happy, right? In actuality, on this earth, it's not that great. However, isn't it prophesied that we will become a royal priesthood in heaven? You and I are all prophesied by the Bible and the prophets. This is a prophecy that can never be changed. As for the kings on the earth, there is a king who reigned for just one year because of illness. Among American presidents, there was even a president who carried out his presidency for less than one year. Although they carry out the presidency, how many years is that? Four years. If he does a second term, it is a total of eight years. What about in Korea? It's just five years because of the single-term system. However long it may be, the presidency lasts for such a short period of time. But what about us? We will reign forever and ever. Is that a hundred years or a thousand years? The prophecy says we will reign forever and ever. And what does verse 6 say? These words are trustworthy and true. They are never false. These words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent His angel to show His servants the things that must soon take place. Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy in this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, Do not do it. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers, the prophets, and of all who keep the words of this book. Worship God. According to the words given, it is explained that the water of life flows out from the throne of the Lamb. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations, and they exist to revive the nations and make the nations fresh. This is what is being explained here. In addition to that, it is said, you will reign forever and ever. Because it's written in letters, does it feel not realistic? Let us suppose that a person who could predict the future said to you, you will be an everlasting king, and then disappeared like fog. What would you feel after that? How excited would you feel every day? Seeing the words of prophecy in the Bible, we should feel and realize that. God told us more convincing words than those of someone who can predict the future. Very soon, this kind of glory will be given to us before long. So we, the children, must take fast hold of it until the end. If we have understood the Bible and the prophets and all the spiritual things rightly, whom must we have? We must have mother. The water of life flowing out from Jerusalem enters the sea, which represents human society. Wherever the river flows, all living things of the sea will live. This is also the prophecy of a prophet. It is impossible without mother. Since mother exists, we and the world can be united together in one. Let us believe the fact that the source of the water of life is Jerusalem Mother, and that through Jerusalem Mother, all the peoples of the world can have their dead souls revived. And wherever the truth of Mother is preached, the world can be refreshed again. Having this belief, let us testify and preach the gospel diligently. This is the absolute condition through which we can receive the Holy Spirit of the latter reign. From now on, let us make more efforts to know God and to put all our strength into the work of God. 
as well as to fear God with all our heart and a deeper mind. Asking you to do this, I would like to finish the sermon. Thank you very much.